The Lakers lead the Celtics 34 to 22 in the second period as we get underway. The two fouls, Kareem on the bench with 13 points. He's been the pivotal man. And Swen Nader, who played in the shadows of Bill Walton at UCLA and was a rebounding champion in both pro basketball leagues as the center. And also Byron Scott, a rookie who really developed as a strong, confident outside shooter. Both of those players acquired from San Diego for Norm Nixon. And there is Swen Nader. What's his role now? Well, he's got to provide some real quality minutes for Kareem, particularly uh, Kareem at his advanced age may not be able to play this pace for a whole game. Danny Ainge is in the ball game for the Boston Celtics to start the second period. Byron Scott is double teamed, and with six seconds on the shot clock, the Lakers have to develop something. McAdoo. In and out for Bob McAdoo. Bird gets the pass to Ainge. Boston's Forte hitting that offensive board. Maxwell gets credit for the basket. The Boston Celtics had a rousing advantage over the Lakers in offensive rebounds in the regular season. 42 to 24. Still lost the games, however. Scott picked up by Buckner. And there is Byron Scott, who grew up near the Lakers' home in Inglewood, California. up so McHale who came in as a power forward off the bench is now playing center for Boston he's got the ball now working against Nader double Buckner not known for his outside shooting misses but there's Maxwell again who played such an important role against Milwaukee in the Eastern Conference Final and the Celtics have a big edge in offensive rebound eight to one Nader is fouled Keeping the Celts at bay right now, Dick, with, uh, let's take a look at this rebound. Uh, Nada, leader in rebounds in the league a couple of times, <laughs> knows how to muscle his way against the best, Kevin McHale. First personal foul on McHale, and Swen Nader goes to the free throw line. The all the rebounders on the front line of Lakers are the slithery, slinky type. You know, not too many muscular people, Rambis and Nader. And Mitch Kupchak, the only muscle guys on the squad. And Nader and Kupchak really don't play an awful lot. Actually, McAdoo serves as the backup center for Kareem most of the time. And Boston likes to bang you and be physical. So some of those skinny guys the Lakers have are going to take a beat. We have a Los Angeles foul. It is on Bob McAdoo. Is the first team foul against the Lakers in the field. Danny Ainge at guard along with Buckner. Maxwell. Oh. And we'll have a Boston foul now as Maxwell gets up. Well, most people think that you can go at Bob McAdoo, the Celts trying to take advantage of him, going to Maxwell, feeling that they can get the shot off against McAdoo. McHale commits the foul, his second. 37 to 26, the Lakers lead. McAdoo with a good move toward the baseline, but he stepped on the line and will turn it over to the Boston Celtics. And coming in for the first time is Jamal Wilkes for the Lakers. Robert Parrish returns at center for the Celtics, and Larry Bird goes out. Bird is off to a slow start scoring wise with only three points. Jamal Wilkes is into the ball game. The Wilkes, we told you, recovering from the virus. Looked like he was getting that shooting eye back in the late stages of the Phoenix deciding game Friday night. Here's Buckner. The Lakers would not mind Buckner shooting all day. Well, Buckner has hit some of those in prior series, but he's going to look like he's going to have to hit some in this series, too. Wilkes. Foul. You know, Magic Johnson and Jamal Wilkes have the same kind of rapport that Joe Montana and Dwight Clark have with the San Francisco 49ers. They just can just have that telegraph and they know where the guy's going to be and they can make those passes. They're on the same wavelength, Dick, all the time. 26, they did have an 18-point lead. Kareem Abdul-Jabbar with 13, Magic Johnson with 10, the leading scorers for the Lakers. McHale with eight coming off the bench, the top scorer for the Boston Celtics. So, so far, Dick, the Lakers have not had an answer to Kevin McHale. He's come off the bench. Everybody thought the classic matchup of six men would prevail, Worthy against Kevin. But Pat Riley elected to start Worthy, 
And that leaves the sixth man job more likely up to Bob McAdoo. And I think Kevin can best him. Lakers coming out with McAdoo, Jamal Wilkes, and Swen Nader up front, Byron Scott, and Magic Johnson in the backcourt. Wilkes will go to the line. Wilkes has had that long virus that has affected him for several months. He missed the first seven playoff games, but has seen action in the last seven for the Lakers, and he is one of the clutch winning players in his career. The biggest and best tribute you give to a player like Wilkes is that he will take the important shot. A lot of guys in key games walk away from that one. Not Jamal. It's one out of two, 9.38 remaining in the first half, and it's a 12-point lead for the Lakers. They would love to win at least one game here at Boston Garden. The first two games are here, and then the next two are in Los Angeles. We'll have more for you live. Parrish is fouled going to the hoop and was looking for the basket. You know, Dick, it's been so long since Robert Parrish has really been in the low post in these series. I think his difficulty stems from the fact that he hasn't been down there for about a month. What does it mean for the Celtics to go against a running team like the Lakers? I know they haven't shown much yet, but what does it mean after their three tough series against those Eastern clubs? Well, I think that a couple of days rest will help them. They like to run. They've got enough bench people that it's not really going to hurt them. And Casey Jones uh, substitutes uh, to a fast-paced game, so it shouldn't mean too much to them. Well, they've had rest. Since they've Wednesday. had rest. It shouldn't bother them at all. Well, but they should like it better, right? Yeah. Right there, right there. Miss the free throw. remaining in the half. Byron Scott working against Dennis Johnson. Maxwell out on Wilkes. Gambling for the steal is Johnson. Four seconds on the shot clock. Against McHale, here's McAdoo. Bob McAdoo, who is the only member of the Lakers who used to play with the Boston Celtics. He's been with six teams in his career. Henderson, drive to the hoop is stopped. McHale, short shot is good. Henderson told us yesterday in practice that he'd like to penetrate a lot more than he has. Kareem gets off the bench and he'll be coming back. Well, any good guy that can penetrate likes to do it so he can get the back line of the defense to move. It creates good passing opportunities. Wilkes on the receiving end of the bounce pass by Magic Johnson. McAdoo left free. Short. And a foul. It's against the Celtics. And here comes Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. He is the leading scorer and rebounder for the Lakers in the playoffs. And he comes back having scored 13. Michael Cooper is also back in the game. Larry Bird remains on the bench. He has scored three points. But significantly, as L.A. comes back to its starters, that second group in there maintained the lead. Kareem going baseline against Paris, who blocks the shot. Kareem, not to be denied, makes good on the second effort. He has 15 points. 14-point lead, Maxwell. Jersey. McHale tries to tip it in, and Cooper starts the break. He's got Scott, McAdoo, and Wilkes trailing. Now Wilkes. Cooper. Cooper hits. When Cooper has held Bird down, he has had his best offensive games. He had a career high, a 31 against Boston one time. Parrish is fouled inside. And here comes Larry Bird back in the ballgame for the Boston Celtics. Bird is one for four shooting and a total of three points. A lot of pride in that man's face. Larry Bird wants to be here in this thing. Uh, he enjoyed it in the early part of his career winning the championship and he liked it.